Today I'm making bread, and not just any bread, I'm making delicious and nutritious sourdough. Now you don't need any expensive stand mixers or anything like that, but there are some key tools that are gonna make your life 10 times easier. There isn't much physical labor involved. However, there are a couple of steps, so keeping your timings is very crucial. Okay, first thing you need to do is set the leaven. We're gonna take a small jar and place it on some scales. We're then gonna need a sourdough starter and some flour. Now, typically when I feed my sourdough starter, I'm using rye flour and strong bread flour, but because I'm, this recipe is gonna be using spelt flour, I'm gonna be using spelt flour for this. First things first, we have spelt flour. We're only putting 15 grams of spelt flour in here because we are gonna use the whole of this leaven in the recipe, so we don't want to make too much. This is some strong bread flour, and we're gonna put 15 grams of this as well. So we're gonna have a total of 30 grams of flour, 50-50 mix between the two types of flour. Then we're going to add in 30 grams of water, which is at 28 to 30 degrees centigrade. And lastly, we're going to put in 40 grams of starter. Once we put this all in the jar, all we need to do is mix it together gently. Make sure all the flour is thoroughly mixed in and everything is combined. Okay, once you've done that, it should look like this. You then need to leave it for about two to four hours and then it will look something like this. You'll see some bubbles and which is a sign of activity of the yeast starting to work. That is your pre-ferment. So, now we can mix the bread. Different bakers use different levels of hydration. Today, I'm just gonna use 375 grams of water that is between 28 and 30 degrees centigrade in temperature, which equates to 75% hydration in this recipe. If you wanna know more about hydration, check out my sourdough guide on maxmixmunch.com. Once we get the water, we then take our leaven, and we mix it in. If you're not sure if your leaven is ready, if it floats, you know it's active because there's CO2 in, in there. So you want all of the leaven. Don't drop any on the table like I did. Use your fingers and just gently stir in the leaven so it's mixed in through the water. This will help the yeast spread through this bread dough very quickly. It doesn't have to be completely mixed, just make sure you've roughly broken down the big bits and it's just a nice sort of slurry in there. Now that we've mixed our leaven in with the water, it's time to add our flour. As I mentioned before, I'm using spelt flour in this recipe. So to start with, I'm gonna add 150 grams of flour. Next, I'm gonna use some strong unbleached bread flour. 350 grams of this. Now we've got a total of 500 grams of flour in the bowl. So, using your hands again, it's time to mix the dough. So we're just gonna gently stir it. We just want to combine the ingredients together. We're not going to knead it. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. You can always wash them. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you've finished mixing, it should look something like this, a bit of a scraggly mess. And that's okay, that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a smooth dough here. We're gonna let the yeast do all the work. We're gonna leave it for an hour for autolysis to occur, and we're gonna come back and carry on working on it. Okay, it's been an hour and now it's time to add in our salt. So I've got 10 grams of salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the dough, like so, evenly. And now I'm gonna take my fingers, and I'm gonna pinch in the salt. And I'm just gonna turn the bowl as I do it. And the goal is to mix it in evenly, but we're also, as I'm pinching, I can feel it getting harder and harder to pinch. And what that means is that the dough is getting stronger. So keep pinching, keep pinching, and you'll see before we had a scraggly mess and now it's much smoother. 
The dough has done most of the work for us, but we've created this really intense, strong gluten network. We've still got a bit of strengthening to do, so we're gonna come back in half an hour to do some stretch and fold. It's been half an hour now, and it's time to stretch and fold. We're going to start off by getting our hands nice and wet. You want a wet hand, but bear in mind, you want the water to be the same sort of temperature as the room. You don't want to put cold water or too hot water in here because you're going to affect the temperature of the dough. So with a wet hand, we're going to grab gently the edge of the dough, like so, and we're going to gently pull up and fold it over. And we're going to work our way around the bowl. We're going to gently grasp the edge and pull it over with a little pull up. And what we're doing here is we're stretching up and over and elongating the glutens. And what that does is it, again, helps that gluten structure grow nice and big, helping trap more of the air that the yeast is producing into the dough, which means a much bigger rise. And it will hold its shape better too. And we're going to work our way all the way around the bowl. And what you'll see is the dough is getting much more tense. You can kind of see it there. It's all going over there. So it, probably about five to eight times, you know, work your way all around the bowl. You'll know once it's there. And you can just leave it there now to rest. So that was the first stretch and fold. We need to do it two more times for a total of three and leave half an hour gap between each. And then after the last stretch and fold, we want to look for when the dough has risen by about a third. So that should take about an hour, but keep an eye on it because it can happen sooner or later, depending on the temperature, the ambient temperature of the room and also how active your starter was in the first place. Okay, it's been an hour and now it's time to start pre-shaping our dough. So to start with, I'm gonna need a bit of flour just on a work surface. Now I'm gonna use a bowl scraper Make sure that's all floured up too, in order to get my dough out. I'm trying to keep the dough intact. Now, this is a bench scraper. Again, I want to make sure this is nicely floured so it doesn't stick to the dough. What I'm going to do is just fold the dough several times over on itself. Don't worry if it sticks to the surface a little bit. What we want to do is create a tight surface. So once I've gone around a few times, I'm just going to use my hand to hold it in place and tuck it under and then turn the dough a bit, just making sure I am gradually making the skin taut. That is now ready to sit and rest for about 15 minutes to half an hour. We just wanna get, let this just, all the glutens relax a bit and just tighten up that skin a bit before we shape the dough. While that's happening, I'm going to take my proofing basket and I'm going to just make sure it's completely floured so the dough doesn't stick later. I'm going to use a little bit of flour here, but not too much, just into the thing. But and, um, what I'm going to do is use some rice flour. Now, why rice flour? Rice flour, when, when the dough hits, is not going to swell up and therefore it won't stick so much. So it's a really, really neat, it's a really good flour to use on the proofing basket. And then I'm just gonna rub it around the edge here. Make sure it's evenly covered everywhere, the flour. First couple of times you're doing it, be really generous with the flour until you know what you're doing. You don't want it sticking. It's very frustrating if the dough sticks to the basket when you empty it out. Okay, now that's rested for 15 minutes and what will have happened is everything will have relaxed a little bit, which will make it much easier for us to shape now. So what I'm going to do is I just want a bit of flour on this other side here, because I'm gonna flip the dough over shortly. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of my hands here and just sprinkle it over the top just to make sure it's nice and easy to shape now. So make sure my bench scraper is nicely floured and I'm just gonna come in from this side here, just go underneath 
and just flip the whole thing over. Oh, stuck there a little bit. Okay, now, a nice bit of dough here, right? So I'm gonna shape a batard, which is this size. I'm gonna take the top end gently, be very gentle. You don't want to knock out all the air. About halfway down, about halfway across, and about halfway across again, okay? Now, rather than pulling it up and then just going to the corners like with a ball, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up to the top from the bottom, pinch the corner here over, pinch this corner, and then we're gonna just grab, 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 like so. Then, from the top, bottom to the top, and the top to the bottom in one fluid motion. Now, we need to tighten this up. So we've got our little flower here. I'm just gonna make sure we go on this side and on this side, really nicely tight. Take a bit more flour here. And just make sure that top of this is thoroughly covered in flour so it doesn't stick to the basket. And with our bench scraper, we're just gonna scoop underneath, lift up, and gently place it in. Okay, now it's in the basket. We're gonna leave it on the counter uncovered for about an hour and a half to two hours to proof into its final shape. It might be a bit quicker depending on how fast it was fermenting in the bowl. After that, the dough is gonna go in the fridge to start what was called retard, otherwise known as cold proofing. And what happens then is the fermentation slows right down, allowing us to choose when we want to bake, but also lots of flavor and nutrients start developing within the dough. Okay, it's day two and it's time to bake. Now there's two options. We can either bake inside a Dutch oven style dish or what I prefer, which is to cook on either fire bricks or a pizza stone. But before that, we're gonna score the loaf to control expansion. Our bread's out of the fridge and we're going to get a bit of flour and put it on our pizza peel. Just make sure it's evenly spread. This is to prevent the bread from sticking to the board when you're putting it in the oven. Okay, so we gently need to turn the proofing basket over and lift up. Now I'm using a curved blade here. This is a baker's lame and this will create a good lip on the loaf and make it look pretty when I score it. So holding it at an angle, about 45 degrees, I'm just going to slice across the top, all the way down from the top to the bottom of the loaf. One smooth movement so it doesn't tear. And then into the oven. I preheated the oven at the highest temperature it would go. And as soon as I put the bread in the oven, I lower the temperature down to 240 degrees centigrade, which is 465 degrees Fahrenheit. After about 20 minutes, I reduce the temperature again further down to 220 degrees centigrade, which is 435 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been about 40 minutes. It's time to take the bread out of the oven. Right, I'm gonna leave it to cool now and come back and try a bit. I've left the bread for a few minutes to cool down and now I'm gonna cut it. It's not hot anymore, but it's still a bit warm. Let's have a little look inside. Look at that. It smells good. Let's try some. I don't know about you, but for me, big dollop of butter makes sourdough bread much better. that nice and soft and moist, not dry at all, perfect, this taste. Mm, yeah. Delicious, really good. Mm. If you had a go at the recipe, let me know how it went down in the comments below, or you can tag me on a post on Instagram. See you next time. Very good, nice and soft, perfect.